Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Exercising Your Brain. We're going to talk about brain games today and how important it is to exercise your brain. My name is Chris Petrick. I am a registered nurse and the director of um, education at ElderWorks. We know ElderWorks is a non-for-profit 503C that helps uh, advocate for older adults and um, explain how placements work. Uh, they give advice on uh, where to look for the best um, living, whether they want to stay home, whether they want to um, work with someone from home care, or maybe even um, experiencing their uh, later part of life within a community setting. ElderWorks is always there for you. We also provide a lot of information, educational information, not only to our seniors, but also to our professionals. So today, again, like I said, we're going to be talking about exercising your brain. You know, there's a lot to be said about mental fitness. And um, when we talk about physical fitness, we're always focusing on, you know, what our, um, what our body looks like. Do we gain, you know, have we gained a lot of weight? Are we maintaining our weight? But we kind of tend to forget about our brains and, and just keep in mind, everything in our body is connected. So as important as physical fitness and actually how it will tie into mental fitness, it is very important to be mentally fit. And we're gonna talk about some of the areas of mental fitness today and um, how we can handle our mental fitness. So let's first talk about our neurons. Our neurons, which are located in the brain, um, really control everything else that happens in our body. So uh, whether it's learning and performing new activities, uh, whether it's performing uh, activities um, that we not only do without thinking, uh, such as walking and talking and breathing, everything depends on those neurons. There's different structures in the neurons. You can see here, this is the nucleus or the center of the new one. This is what we call a dendrite. And right down here is where we call the axon and the synapse. And it, it really starts in the nucleus, moves around to the dendrite, circles down here, and everything ends here and connects to another neuron. So it's really important to keep our neurons healthy. The one thing we know about neurons is that you use it or you lose it. <clears throat> the old um, feelings were, uh, since we, you know, when we didn't have science and medicine as it is today, we often thought that um, when you uh, lost some brain cells, they were gone forever. I don't know if any of you remember when you were young and <clears throat> uh, you were just getting the, <clears throat> excuse me, the opportunity to enjoy alcoholic beverages. Some people would say, oh, I, I killed a few brain cells that night when I went out drinking. And so we believed back then that the, the brain cells never regenerated. We know now that that happens. Uh, so it's really that mindset that we, if we lose it, if we don't use it, we're going to lose it. We also know that learning and performing new activities results in increased connections between neurons. So I know a lot of older adults who are physically able to have taken up pickleball. That's a great, that although it's a physical exercise, it's learning a new activity. So it's generating new brain cells and neurons and synapses. Uh, performing activities repetitively reinforces connections in our brain. So doing things over and over. So if you um, play the piano, practicing the piano, um, you know, if you do word puzzles, you keep doing word puzzles, something as simple as changing your routine when you're getting dressed every morning can help develop a few new neurons in your brain. So if you're a person that puts your pants on first, and then you put your shirt on, and then you put your shoes and socks on, maybe you should try it a little different. And that would be putting your shirt on first, then putting your pants on, then putting your socks on and your shoes, or brushing your teeth. If you're right-handed and you're used to brushing your teeth with your right hand, use your left hand. Same thing with combing your hair. Every time you do something a little bit different, it helps connect th those uh, neurons. We also know that age presents a decrease in the amount of white matter 
and functioning of the mitochondria, which is really where a lot of our neurons are housed. And we know that various medical, genetic, environmental, and lifestyle factors can influence the declines in cellular functioning. We know that, uh, we now know that when there is inflammation in your body, there's going to be inflammation in your brain because it's all connected. So our job is to make sure that we reduce the inflammation on, in our brain, so or in your body. So if you have a disease like arthritis, which is an inflammatory um, uh, process, you want to work on getting that inflammation down. And that might be by choosing the right foods. It might be by taking your medicine. It might be exercising more. And what you're doing is you're giving your brain a favor by doing that because you're reducing the inflammation in your brain. Because anytime there's going to be inflammation in your brain, your neurons are not going to work correctly. One of the things that we, um, we use our brain for is concentration. And that's your ability to focus your mind on a single thought or task. And um, there's, we concentrate in different ways at different times. And uh, we're going to see a video in just a second that talks about concentration. And what I want you to do as we're watching this video is to notice something that might be a little different in it that wasn't the same at the beginning of the video clip. Sometimes it's hard to catch those things because we're looking at so many different things at one time, it's hard for us to con concentrate, but see if you can catch it. Um, and the next thing is uh, that goes along with concentration is attention. And again, um, when we talk about attention and concentration kind of going together, this is that little video clip that I was talking about. So here we go. People are constantly bombarded with stimuli, sights, sounds, odors, feelings. And in order to zero in on any of them, we rely on attention focusing on a specific stimuli in our environment. Specifically, we engage in selective attention by choosing certain stimuli in the environment to process while ignoring the rest. Like how people turn down the car radio when they're looking for a particular road or address. But sometimes we also need to exhibit divided attention, where we attend to multiple sources of information at once. A popular example of this is the cocktail party effect. Have you ever been at a party, engaged in a conversation with someone cool, and then you hear someone mention your name across the room? You become aware of it almost immediately, even though you weren't paying conscious attention to it. In this case, your name triggers selective attention, causing you to filter out the other stimuli upon hearing your name. This can be mimicked in the lab using a dichotic listening task. In this task, a listener wearing headphones receives a message in the right ear and another in the left. The listener is asked to attend to only one of these messages and repeat it word for word. Afterwards, they are quizzed on the material that was played in the non-shadowed ear, the one that they weren't attending to. Individuals can typically remember only superficial aspects of the non-shadowed message, such as whether the speaker was male or female, the number of people speaking, and a little bit about the topic of the message. But regardless of whether they are consciously aware of it, some aspects of the message still come through. For example, the listener's interpretation can be influenced by what is played in each ear. If the sentence, they were throwing rocks at the bank, is played in the shadowed ear, the word bank is more likely to be interpreted as a financial institution if the word money is simultaneously played in the non-shadowed ear. If the word stream is played in the non-shadowed ear, the bank is more likely to be interpreted as the side of a river. But our attention isn't perfect. People are both unaware of many aspects of their environment and blind to that lack of awareness. Inattentional blindness is the failure to notice an unexpected object or event when one's attention is focused on something else. This has been demonstrated in many rather humorous studies. In one study, people were told to count the number of times folks wearing white shirts in a video passed a basketball. Then, in the middle of the video, a guy in a gorilla suit walks straight through the scene. Because they were so focused on counting the number of passes, half of the viewers failed to notice the gorilla. Half! 
It's easy to laugh at this, but this lack of awareness can actually have some far-reaching consequences. Like when drivers fail to notice pedestrians or cyclists because their focus is elsewhere. Another example of our lack of awareness is change blindness, the failure to notice a change in a stimulus event. For example, did you notice anything that changed over the course of this video? It's kind of hard to notice change, especially when we don't see it coming. So my question is, did anybody notice that change in her necklace and her um, covering? Very interesting. But as important as attention is, keep in mind that concentration is very important. And it's really important in what we do uh, on a daily basis. Without the ability to concentrate, thoughts could be lost and memories wasted. So if you're eating an ice cream cone and you're most likely thinking or focusing on the taste and the texture and possibly the fact that you'll have more when you're finished, that would be me. When you are reading the newspaper or your favorite magazine, you are concentrating on the words and the details that bring the article to life and finish up with a nice crossword puzzle. Just as you read the text for this class, you're stimulating your brain and putting forth an effort to concentrate. So although concentration is a little bit different than attention, they're both equally as important. That's gonna help you focus. It's, it's gonna help you remember and one kind of um, helps the other. All right, let's move on to the next one. So when we talk about how do we exercise our brain, there's really different ways that we can do it. We can learn to play a musical instrument. We can play Scrabble, doing crossword puzzles, interacting with others, starting a new hobby, learning a foreign language, volunteering, taking classes, and socializing. I don't think there's one on this list that's not more important than the other. Um, I think they all are, um, help to exercise our brain. We saw in studies that people's um, brains, you know, when we talked about brain fog or we talked about not thinking straight during COVID, during the shut-in, is because people weren't socializing. We were finding ways to socialize. Um, you know, a lot of people became familiar with Zoom, never did it before, before COVID. But um, it was really important for our brains to get uh, get out there and get socializing and talking to other people again. But all of these are really important. You'll find different ways to exercise your brain. This is not a comprehensive list. There's plenty more. So I'm going to have you watch this video. And we're going to test your memory and we'll see what happens afterwards.
I'm going to stop it there. And what I'm going to do next, let's see um, if you can get the same results or if you do any better with no music. Anybody out there got um, better results without the music? <clears throat> Excuse me. Sometimes um, there can be distractions when you're trying to think and concentrate. <clears throat> Excuse me and pay attention. So sometimes um, give your brain a treat and remove some of those, and that might help you. Let me get my volume back on. And here we go. All right. Here's another um, kind of fun game that you can create yourself. And um, this is going to be a phone number without the area code. So take a look at these pictures. Someone pouring and we have some trees. We have a bundle of sticks. We have some shoes. We have heaven. We have buns. And we have trees again. So let's pull one word from each of those. Pour, tree, sticks, shoe, heaven, buns, tree. And if you came up with the answer, four, three, six, two, eight, one, three, you got it right. Sometimes by putting a picture with something you're supposed to remember will help you remember that person's name, or it might uh, help you remember that thing that you need to do. Um, if you think of a postage stamp in your brain, <clears throat> where do you think you may have to go today? The post office, right? So sometimes um, exercising, that's just another way of exercising your brain and can be kind of fun. Here's some memory strategies for um, adults. We won't do all of them because there's 11 of them, but um, we'll, we'll get through half of these. So think about this. Nowadays, a lot of people are obsessed with a healthy lifestyle. They eat wholesome food, work out at the gym, and all that jazz. But they tend to forget that our brain needs exercise too, especially if you've started having memory lapses more often. Um, what did I just say? Oh yeah, so if people keep saying you have the memory of a goldfish, don't fret. Just try these simple brain exercises to help you out. Number 1. 
read books aloud. In 2017, the University of Waterloo conducted an experiment where they asked 95 participants to read silently, listen to someone else read, listen to a recording of themselves reading, and read out loud in real time. Later, participants were required to repeat words they read. It turned out the word recall was greatest in the group that read aloud to themselves. When you speak and hear yourself speaking at the same time, it helps the brain to store the information. You can practice this exercise with your friend or a child. Also, you can try to switch to audiobooks. Listening to them engages the imagination and brain regions in a different way than silent reading. Number 2. Switch hands during daily activities. Only 1% of the world doesn't have a dominant hand. Everyone else uses either the right one or the left one to read, cut food, paint, and so on. But if you try to switch to your other hand, it'll strengthen neural connections in your brain, making your mind and memory sharper. Use your opposite hand while brushing your teeth, cleaning, or washing the dishes. But hey, please don't try this exercise while you're driving or doing brain surgery. It might seem really hard the first time you do it, but it'll give your brain the perfect kind of stimulation by adjusting. Just keep practicing this exercise regularly. Number 3. Elevate your heart rate three times a week. Regular aerobic exercise may increase the size of the hippocampus. No, that's not the University of Hippo. It's the part of the brain responsible for transforming information into new memories. A study published in 2011 backs up the idea about the positive impact working out has on our memory. According to it, aerobic exercises that pump up your heart rate help the brain store long-term memories. But even if breaking a sweat at the gym isn't exactly your thing, you can just take a brisk walk for 20 minutes, three times a week, and still get the same effect. Four. Eat with chopsticks. It's one of the most effective ways to make your brain perform better. And here's how it works. Using chopsticks grows new dendrites, which are extensions of nerve cells. They help to transmit impulses from cell to cell. This means that these dendrites have a positive impact on communication between brain cells. What's more, involving the concentrated areas of nerve cells in your fingertips in this activity boosts the circulation in the brain. And as a bonus, switching to chopsticks improves your digestion and helps control calorie intake. Because it's so hard! Number 5. Wear earplugs. Blocking a major sensory route by wearing plugs helps revive the way our brain functions. Because when we go about our day, we only half listen, since we know what to expect. Experiencing the world without sound is a great booster for our cognitive abilities, including memory. You can try this technique, for example, during a family breakfast. But don't forget to warn your family about it, or they'll think you've decided to ignore them for no reason. Huh? Number 6. Create word pictures and puzzles. This is, hands down, the easiest exercise that you can perform anywhere like when you're in public transport or waiting in line at a grocery store. Think of any word you like and visualize its spelling in your head. After you've done with this task, try to come up with any other words, as many as you can, that begin or end with the same two letters of your first word. This kind of mind game challenges your brain to stay active and sharp. 7. Do the four detail observation exercise. This is what scientists call passive memory training. You can practice it while you're out and about. All you have to do is observe any four details about someone you encounter during the day, and then recall them later. Let's say the barista who made your coffee. He or she could have had deep dark hair, a gold watch, a beauty spot on their right cheek, and a yellow t-shirt on. Start noticing these little details on just one person a day and gradually increase that number, or add more details to remember. The thing is, while we go about our day, we don't observe as much as we should, failing to receive information. Besides, being more observant of the people who surround you is a great social skill. Here we go, and those are some exercises. But we're going to do some now, so grab a pencil and paper. And this is something that you can create at home. I, um, I did this for a group of people. Um, I was the director of wellness and education 
at one time in a continuing care retirement community. And we would meet once a week and I would have a different topic. So it would be the ABCs of city and towns in Illinois or animals. And so um, we would sit and we'd see how many things we could come up with. And again, just brain games. So take a look at this and I'll give you a minute. I know I'm being kind of chintzy on time, but give yourself a minute. Well, let's make it a minute and a half. Okay. And I want you to think of any towns, any uh, city or towns in Illinois and go. Halfway there. and stop, pens and pencils down. These are ones I came up with. You may have other ones, but again, just to show you. So I came up with Addison, Bartlett, Champaign, Dixon, Evanston, Frankfurt, Galena, Hoffman Estates, Inverness, Joliet, Kankakee, Lyons, Morris, Naperville, Oswego, Palatine, Quincy, Rolling Meadows, Schomburg, Tinley Park, Utica, Viola, Wilmette, Xenia, and Yorkville. And we're missing our Z there. Um, that could be Zion. But um, I have to tell you, I, I did cheat a little bit on X. I looked a, um, couldn't come up with an X one. So that's what I came up with. What did you all come up with? You can play this with your grandkids. You can play this um, with your friends. And again, just a, a fun way to, to pass the time, but also you're connecting brain cells. Doesn't have to be work. So here's our animals, 60 seconds, find some animals and go. Halfway there. And stop, pens down. And again, you may have other ones than I have, but here's my answers. Aardvark, bison, cat, dog, elephant, frog, giraffe, hyena, iguana, jackal, koala, loon, 
mouse, newt, aura, platypus, quail, rooster, snake, tiger, yukari, vulture, whale, zima, tack, and zebra. And I had to pull in some help on this one. And my grandson happened to be over at the time. And um, he helped me fill this one out. So it was fun because I was socializing with my grandson. We were connecting, but also, um, and, and he was thinking of, of animals too. So just another brain game that's kind of fun and you can make up yourself. Here's another one. You can make a square and put, uh, it looks like this one has one, two, three, four vowels in it and one, two, three, four, five consonants in it. So write down as many words you find in 60 seconds and then we'll compare. The letters don't have to, to be touching. The proper nouns are not allowed and plural nouns are acceptable. So grab your pens and go. All right, so let me give you the words I had. And again, you may have other ones, that's okay. Sing, song, tan, giant, tingle, lang, ant, tang, sat, ton, snag, stag, slang, and slant. Those are some examples of words I found. What are the words that you found? All right, I'm going to stop sharing for a minute because I want to pull up this other um, program that we had. And um, okay, so this is something called Dacum Systems. And Dacum Systems can be done in a community setting. So if you are in a community setting and you like this, you may be able to talk to your um, powers that be about getting it. I discovered this when I was in a, a community setting and our residents loved it. But you can get a um, individual um, membership for this. And I just want to show you what this does. To start with, picture this is a short-term memory exercise that strengthens your visual recall. First, you're shown several images and given a few seconds to study them. So take a good look at these now. Then you're... As you get better at this, the number and similarity of the images will increase. Until you're dealing with sets like this. Whoa. Whoa. Don't worry, we'll teach you memory strategies to help you. In the visuospatial game, This End Up, you reproduce the pattern of yellow squares as it would look if rotated to a different orientation. Try it. 
Click the squares on the right hand figure to match the pattern. This one's hard for me. Um, because I have to turn my head to do it. Wow. And there we go. Again, as you progress, the complexity increases. This is the Joker, who's always wild, if you know what I mean. But listen to the clue and see if you can figure out his identity. I am three more than the following. One third of 99 divided by 11. What card am I? So this is really, um, you know, working that occipital part of your brain where a lot of that math stuff comes from. Oops, there we go, it's six. Letter Tales is one of the many language games in Dakin Brain Fitness that also trains your critical thinking abilities. Here's an example. Choose just one letter from each vertical column of three to spell a common word from left to right. Try this one and use the hint if you need it. Let's see what our hint was. Nope. All these games will adjust as your performance improves, so you'll always get the right level of challenge. Okay, to finish up, how about a ride on a magic bus? Finally, for fun, try our retro version of Concentration, a little tribute to the 60s. You know what they say, if you remember them, you probably weren't there. Select buttons one at a time. As you locate matching images, select them in succession until you've uncovered them all. Try to match them with as few clicks as possible. Now that you've seen a few exercises, it's time to find out what a real workout feels like. All right, and we'll end that one there because then they try to sell you it. And I don't know what it costs. You do have a three-day trial, which is, you know, reasonable. But, um, you know, I'm always afraid of getting sucked into something more than a three-day trial. I'm going to switch this and go to Kittle. Okay. Oh, and it always wants to give me Kindle. Okay. Kittle words for kids. You, um, you may work on Wordle. Um, I get very frustrated with Wordle, so I don't play Wordle, but I play Kittle. And I'll tell you what, it really has um, uh, helped connect our grandkids with us because when we are babysitting, they each uh, want us on one of our phones and we work on this together and it's actually kind of fun. So, and it's developing their skills too. So you start out just guessing a word, okay? And it can be any word you want. We'll do it in a minute. And then this tells you when it turns green, it tells you the word uh, that letter is in the right place. When you get a yellow, it says that word, that letter is in the word, but it's not in the right place. And this one tells you it's, it's not a letter that's used. So let me move this box over. We're going to close that. And I always like to start with a um, word that has an E in it because E is in so many of the words. 
and I press enter. It tells me I have an L in there, but now I can't use an E, I can't use an N, I can't use an I. So G, L, O, let's do W. And we hit enter. So now I know there's an L and an O in there, but I they're still not in the right place, and I can't um, I can't use the letters that are there right now. So uh, let's not do B. Let's do C O L T. Colt. So I know there's the C-O-L is in the right place. I haven't used a D yet. So I'm going to do C-O-L-D and hit enter. And there it says, you did it. The word is cold. So I figured out the word before my last two chances. Again, um, this one, you don't have to buy. You can pull it up on your phone. All you do is go to uh, the web and just put uh, Kittle, play Kittle, and it's only with one D. And um, you'll that you'll go, it'll show the instructions. And then um, from there, it will um, it, it will give you the game. So those are a couple of the the um, brain games. Keep it going. It's important that you exercise your brain. Um, every time I do a webinar, I'm exercising my brain um, because I am doing things repetitively. I'll tell you when I started uh, doing this right before COVID, um, I had never heard of Zoom before. And now I don't want to say I could teach a class. I don't want to get that gutsy, but I can definitely do Zoom more than I better than I ever did before. And I'm always learning new things about it. So make sure you take the time to, um, you know, treat your brain every day to something. I, my husband does a word uh, puzzle right before he goes to bed every night. Um, you know, I do a puzzle on my, um, you know, a, a jigsaw puzzle on my iPad every day. And so there's always different ways, but don't forget exercising your brain also um, means physical fitness too, getting enough oxygen to that brain. So walking um, and uh, making sure that you're eating right and drinking plenty of water, plenty of fluids will help you keep your brain in top shape. Until next time, keep your brain healthy and have a good day. Thank you.